गुड आफ्टरनून लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन एंड वेलकम टू ई टी ऑटो मंथली सीरीज द मंथ कॉन बाय सो जस्ट एज वी हैव एंडेड द मंथ ऑफ मे ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री एंड एंटरिंग इन टू जून लेट एस डीप डाइव इन टू वॉट रियली हैपन इन दी ऑटो इंडस्ट्री इट्स परफॉर्मेंस की इन साइट्स एंड द लेटेस्ट ट्रेंड्स सो फॉर दिस वी हैव विद अस आर गेस्ट मिस्टर अरुण मल्होत्रा You don't need an introduction to him, but uh, because he has been in the auto industry for several years now, he has worked with leading OEMs like Maruti Suzuki, Mahindra, Bajaj Auto, and completed his last stint, last corporate stint with Nissan India in 2018. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you, Shivani. Yes. So, looking at you know uh, the performance of the auto industry, like what do you have to say about that? See, if I compare the May month uh, to the last year's May. it definitely is a double digit growth but having said that last year in april and may there were serious supply constraints on components so one cannot really say that it's been a real growth the second part which i want to emphasize is that may traditionally is a good month for the auto industry because one april month which has a lot of after effects of march goes by and june the monsoon sets in and also there is a strong marriage season which positively impacts the auto industry in the month of may so if i look at that i will say it's been a stable solid secure month but i won't call it outstanding in any manner it's been a reasonable month but it was if i talk to industry experts they would have liked it to be a better month that's the way i look at it be yeah so if we specifically look at different segments uh, you know in the auto industry so uh, how do you think was the performance of passenger vehicles what were the uh, headwinds or tailwinds what drove the demand and probably what can we expect in the coming months so if you look at the passenger vehicle market the uh, the dispatches to dealers was 3.35 lakhs and the retails also close to it about 3.2 lakhs so retails clearly better than what was in the month of april and there's a growth of 10 to 12% if i take april may of 2023 versus april may of 2022 but the good news might stop there because last year from june onwards the production supply improved dramatically and was in the region of 3.4 lakhs so this double digit growth which is being shown in april may is on a slightly lower base so from june onwards if we have to grow as industry it has to be more than 3.4 lakhs So definitely the industry has performed okay. I mean, generally I have nothing to complain about, but it could have been clearly better. I think the one big trend which is clearly evident in the passenger vehicle, we thought the SUV segment had crossed the magic figure of fifty percent, but if you look at the month of May, it has crossed fifty-five percent, and uh, new launches are happening in the SUV segment and they are doing well. The launches which happened in the sedan segment. have not done all that well so clearly the market is very strongly tilted towards suv which means the average ticket size goes up but one thing i must highlight is in april may in the dealer network there has been addition of stocks of about 50000 vehicles so the probability or the possibility of adding stocks in june will be low so whatever we start dispatching in june or july or august it has to be retails have to match with it and in various parts of india although weather has become very unpredictable now the monsoons does start setting in from the 20th of june mm -hmm. so that's a question which we have to keep in mind right right also like the major stress in the industry has been two wheelers since uh, you know the second wave of covid probably when it affected the rural markets so how do you see that you know going forward how has it improved we have seen like we are hearing that it has improved over time but uh, how do you see that going forward and what probably was you know uh, impacting the sales so one clearly was that may has been a better month i mean the the dispatches to dealers have been the region of 14.3 lakhs retails are somewhere near 14 lakhs clearly better than april and also better than the same period last year but considering that we believed that covid was behind us economy was in good shape and there was a strong marriage season in the month of may which actually impacts the two wheeler market more stronger than passenger vehicles it's not been a great month it's a normal month and i don't think with these numbers we'll be able to come anywhere near the 21 million figure which we are talk we talk of which we achieved in 1819 but signs are positive but it's again 
solid, stable, secure, not very flashy. So if the mood is cautiously optimistic, but I don't need, there's no need to be optimism which are there. And prices have gone up in the last few months again. So that's a question. But generally sales have been okay. I mean, if I like, there's nothing much to complain if you look at other industries. I think automobile has done better. Yeah, I think there's reason to be happy, but we can only hope for the better. Yeah, we can hope forward. for the best and we have to be cautiously optimistic. Yeah. Also, like another important thing that we have seen uh, progressing over the past months is the electric vehicle industry, you know. Uh, like for specifically for the electric two wheelers, there has been a lot of news around it, the chargers, the subsidy, the fame. So could you like in simpler terms, how would you define all of this? So if I have to define in cricket parlance, I would say it's, it's a nerve wracking ball to ball change like what happened in the final in the IPL between uh, Chennai and Gujarat. But it's been a roller coaster ride. Look at and at the three, four major incidents happened in the last one month. And every time the news has shifted. The first part was some companies which the government feels that government had investigated who have probably overlooked the norm which was there for Indianization. They did not abide by it. So government had stopped their subsidy and now they've asked their amount which they're subsidized to give it back. So that was the first development. The second development was companies which probably had met the localization norms. But there was also a cap of 1.5 lakhs as the ex-factory price. And government felt that the charging, the charger, which the fast charger which was being sold to customers, which was deep blocked from the actual price, was not confirming, should have been part of the 1.5 lakhs. So companies in a very gracious manner have agreed to give the customers who had paid for that amount there and in future not to charge for it. So first development, companies, some companies debarred. Some companies have to return some money and to abide by 1.5 lakhs. Then the announcement came that since the utilization on two wheelers was very strong and this utilization not only numbers but more in value because government just to give a strong fillip and momentum had raised the subsidy amount from 10,000 per kilowatt hours to 15,000 and 40% of the subsidy. So there was a clear announcement just a week, eight days before the month that the subsidy will be capped at 10,000 per kilowatt hour and the maximum subsidy which was 40% will go down by 215% which means there's a reduction of 60%. And if you take a 1.5 lakh scooter which is exactly price, this results in a reduction of subsidy to the tune of 35 to 38,000 rupees. Now what companies have done is that from the 1st of June, they did two things. One, they announced that this price is only valid for the next seven days and second, they announced that prices will go up by 18 to 20,000 from 1st of June. So there was a phenomenal rush in the last five days on sale of EV vehicles and stocks were available. And so we touched that magic figure of one lakh for the first time. We crossed the one lakh figure for electric two wheelers. But this record figure is not a figure for thumb chesting or thumb because a lot of sale has got pre-pwned also. The real test will come in the month of June when a lot of pre pwnment has happened, when the higher prices will start prevailing. So four key developments happening. So that's why I call it a topsy-turvy, a roller coaster ride. And I hope there is more sanity in the time to come. Yeah, probably in the next two, three months, we would be able to Absolutely. like understand you know, so, the real so, demand. So real demand, but I feel the, the future for electric two wheelers is still strong. And I think companies are recalibrating their policy, their strategy, their product uh, mix or the product refinement which is there, probably you'll have scooters which will be less powerful or be lower costing because they have to meet this norm also. So that will happen but I believe there will be some sort of a roadblock in the month but ideally it should go up. But that heavy subsidy which was there is now a thing of the past and on top of it there is there are words going in the market from 2024 April when this subsidy regime ends it will not be renewed, it will be a level playing field. So the electric two-wheeler manufacturers have to get geared up and attract customers with that price point. Yeah, hoping for the best, but a lot is yet to be seen. Yeah, a lot to be yeah. done. It's interesting times. Yeah. Have you seen an interesting T20 match? I'm sure there are more interesting matches to follow. Definitely. Also, we have ju we were just talking about EVs. So we've also seen, you know, a lot of car makers and even government pushing for a bouquet of technologies. There's hydrogen, there's flex, flex fuels, there's uh, uh, petrol, diesel, a lot, lot is there. But we've also seen news about diesel vehicles phasing out. Some insight on that, like what is the way forward there? Shwangi, there was a there was a committee formed by the by the government of India 
which wanted to look at diesel. And that committee had recommended that by 2027, diesel vehicles uh, should be discontinued, new vehicle registration of diesel vehicles should be discontinued in towns with more than 1 million population. That is 10 lakhs population. Now, you and say there are only 60 towns by that. But if you just take a state of Madhya Pradesh and you take out Indore, Bhopal, Jabalpur, Gwalior, and you, a few which are above 10 lakhs, it effectively means that you are going to see that diesel doesn't exist at all. Now, if you look at diesel, two wheelers, no issues. Three wheelers has moved out of diesel to a different technologies. Passenger vehicles, which is to be 35%, is now 18%, and that is also shrinking. So it will be a slightly tough thing, but it will be managed. But I cannot fathom in trucks and buses where the proportion of diesel is still 95% and other technologies at the infancy stage, whether we'll be able to stop. Now, this is just a recommendation. I'm sure this recommendation will go to the ministries, the industry association, discuss the government, but it has set alarms bell ringing for as far as diesel is concerned. So diesel vehicles, diesel technology, and companies who had plans for vehicles in diesel, they'll be pruning it, they already started pruning. So that's the time. Now coming, talking about other technologies, we are talking about a bouquet of technologies now. And you know, we talk about like the seven rainbow colors now. Petrol, diesel already existed. We had CNG, we had flex fuels, and we now are having hydrogen, which we are talking of. And we are talking of, then there is EVs. So one thing which has happened, CNG has, which had gone down, is coming back because the prices have been rationalized. There's been a good response to hybrid vehicles. Maruti and Toyota has launched hybrid vehicles and there's a good response. And probably it is a good point which is there. Hydrogen fuel, a lot is being done. Government has set up a committee, but it's early days. But that will be more relevant for trucks and buses. So what I believe, and I think there's a, a serious voice being raised across industry segments, that the government should be technology agnostic. The objective is to reduce emission. The objective is to reduce the fuel bill. And if different technologies can meet this point, we shouldn't just push on one technology. The jury is still out on that, but let's see what happens. But clearly, new other technologies will emerge and will probably have a bigger role to play. And that is where EV will have a, a competition within the technologies. Right. And a lot of new technologies have come up. So a lot of work is also going on the research part at the back end. Absolutely. So in the uh, coming years, probably new technologies Absolutely. might commercialize and operationalize. And, you know, we might have, we, we will definitely have a bouquet of technologies. We are yet to see which one moves ahead of the other probably. So absolutely right. I think what is going to be seen is which of these technologies become relevant and commercially viable as fast as possible. Right. Right. And when it comes, that technology will take over because every technology has a different trajectory to follow. So there are interesting times, it's difficult to project. I don't think the auto industry in the last 100 years have never been at such an inflection point that there are so many technologies and you don't know what will really happen in the next five, 10 years. So we are here for interesting times. Right, thank you for your time, sir. It was really insightful discussion uh, having you here. Okay. And uh, thank you for watching ET Auto and stay tuned for future updates. Thank you. Thank you very much.